good afternoon. My name's Darren. I'm here to talk to you today about relevant life. Would you consider your relevant life? You may well be in your own business, and that's the important part. What, we're what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about a relevant life policy. What is a relevant life policy? Well, first of all, it's life assurance. It pays out of your die. It's really better described as death in service for just one person. Many larger companies would have death in service policies covering all or some of their staff. Sometimes they would just cover management, management that sort of thing. Um, but you can't do that if there's only one of you. So we have a death in service policy for one person. The benefit of relevant life policies is tax advantageous. So there's lot, lots of tax savings involved for both the company and for you as the individual. It's perfect if you're a company director who draws a salary. Um, you must be an employee for relevant life, so no sole traders. Um, sole traders can take out a relative, a relevant life policy on a member of their employees. So if they have a small business and they are trading as a self-employed sole trader or perhaps a partnership, but they employ someone as an office clerk or something as under the under that banner, that person could be a relevant life but the sole trader themselves couldn't be. In the case of limited companies where you're a limited company director, as long as you're drawing a salary, you are an employee and therefore could have relevant life. And it could be for one person or you could have several relevant life policies in the company for different important people. Um, and sometimes there are benefits to that, even if you could arrange a group scheme. I'll come to that in a moment. So for example, John is a 50 year old company director. 100% shareholder. Typical case, let's assume he doesn't employ anybody, it's just him. Um, and he's looking to take out a life insurance policy with £100 of premium. Now, John could just buy this himself, like many of us would do, pays it from his own bank account. But as a basic rate taxpayer, I'm assuming that, obviously it gets better as a high rate taxpayer, he must earn £147.06 to generate that £100. That's because of tax and national insurance that he would, have, he would have been charged on that money. The company also has to pay national insurance, of course. So 13.8% of the £147 that John earned. Um, so therefore another £20.29. You add the two together, the total cost of that £100 a month premium has been £167. Now as John is the company, it's effectively cost John £167 for him to buy a hundred pound a month policy. Not good news. Um, and that's why people look at relevant life because it can be paid for by the company. But let's just look at those numbers a little bit. It, it's, it doesn't seem as that way when you look at it normally, but this is the reality. If you are earning that money, a higher rate taxpayer would cost more than that, of course, um, because John would have to earn even more to get the net 100 and there will be more national insurance on both sides. Now, if we then look at the company buying a relevant life policy, same policy, still costing £100 a month, but the company doesn't pay any national insurance as it isn't being paid to John as salary. And John doesn't pay any tax or national insurance as he's not receiving it either. So the total cost to John, or the company if you put it that way, is £100. That's a saving of £67.35 a month compared to what it costs if he does it himself for the same life insurance policy, effectively. Now, of course, both of those numbers are slightly skewed by the fact that the company will get tax relief of a, on that fund because it will reduce the corporation tax due, currently 19%. So you could say they save another £19 on that. Whereas they won't do it, they will pay and they will also save some national insurance or up to corporation tax on what John earns. So the two offset each other a little bit. So, so I've ignored that for this purpose. And I mentioned other tax savings. There are tax benefits. First of all, this is a very important one if you're a company director of a decent SIP or SAS or personal pension. If you've got a large pension fund, group life policies, this is where you have a group life policy or whatever, adds to your fund for lifetime allowance policies purposes. Now the, the lifetime allowance currently is a little bit over a million pounds. So if you've got an 800,000 pension fund and four times salary, 
generating 300,000, you're over the lifetime limit and you will be taxed potentially at 55% on the excess just for having group life. This certainly applies to people who work in larger companies where they have a large group life policy and they have a large pension fund. That also applies if you've got a final salary scheme where they work out what it's worth in cash terms. If you have a relevant life policy, it is not included because it's deemed to be personal covered, despite being paid for by the company. So you could have a million pound pension fund and a million pound life cover and you're still below that threshold of just over a million pounds. So worth considering that if you have, even if you have a group life scheme, it's worth the director or whatever not being in that and having a relevant life policy instead. The other benefit is relevant life is not taxed as P11D benefit in kind, so you won't get any tax charge for the company having a scheme in place. Unlike some schemes, i.e. your medical insurance, which does have P11D tax benefit and therefore is taxable, but life insurance is not. It's not tax for inheritance tax purposes because it's held in trust. So when the payment's paid out when you die, go straight to your family directly with no taxation. It does not form a part of your estate. And it's not tax for capital gains tax purposes. Now, you haven't made a capital gain because you're not really involved in the process. So that, that's the benefits behind it. And that's why we're looking at relevant life is a good thing to look at. Not all companies provide it. Um, not all insurance companies offer relevant life. A lot of insurance companies will only offer you their standard term assurance, which does not offer the same tax benefits in the same way. There are some tax concessions you can take advantage of a standard level term assurance, for example, but it's not at the same level as relevant life because it's not been set up correctly. So be very conscious of that. If you have need of, of life assurance, then a relevant life would possibly be better for you. So speak to a qualified financial advisor who works within the corporate and small business area, who has experience and knowledge of the market, and they will be able to put together a report, show you the risks of things, certain things happen to you, what, what effects it would have on your business, etc. So relevant life. So that's it for today. Um, next session, I'll be talking about other terms of types of protection required by businesses, for example, shareholder protection, that sort of thing. So look forward to speaking again soon.